Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady, and our story today. I know you work here, so give me a cat. But before we start, I just want to thank everyone who supports the channel with your comments, subscribe, and like. Thanks a lot. And let's get started. So I've been lurking here for a while, and being the reclusive heathen, or, you know, university student living with my parents that I am, I never really thought I'd ever be posting here. I guess I got what I deserved for that sort of arrogance. Now this is a little different from the usual customer is confused for an employee story since I was actually a volunteer at the place this all went down. But there's a large difference in staff and volunteer responsibilities there, so I think it still fits. On with the story. So I haven't actually held a job before, but my sophomore year of college I realized I wanted to cram a little bit of work experience slash resume padding into my already pretty busy schedule. So I started volunteering at a local animal shelter. Fast forward about eight months. It was a particularly busy day, the weekends usually are, and I was already through the part of my normal routine that looks like actual work. Sweeping, doing dishes, changing out water bowls, stuff like that. I had moved on to socializing the cats, which, yes, is basically just petting them for a few minutes. But that's actually really important for shelter animals since it might be the only contact they'll have with a person for the whole day. Since the main goal is getting animals into forever homes, it's vital that they're comfortable and able to be affectionate with people. I should make a quick note that while normally volunteers are required to wear an apron which has volunteer written across the chest, when socializing with the cats I have to wear a scrub top over it in order to reduce the spread of germs between the cats. Because of this, I'll admit I look sort of professional, disregarding my purple hair. And I was in an area that had a big sign on it that read, Staff and Volunteers Only. However, the uniform for staff members at this shelter was khakis and a blue polo shirt that had the word staff printed on it in white letters. I was clearly wearing blue jeans and the bottom of the volunteer apron did hang down below the bottom of the scrub top. Still, I'm used to answering questions from potential pet parents when I can, or at least directing them to a staff member who might help them. So when a man, maybe mid-40s, and dressed like he'd come straight from church, knocked on the door jam to the cat room, I smiled at him and politely, but stayed where I was, kneeling in front of one of the kennels. I was trying to coax a knot out of the fur of a particularly long-time tenant there at the shelter, an old, long-haired calico named Mrs. Quimbley, and I didn't want to risk losing it because everyone who worked in the cat room knew she'd scratch at it until she hurt herself if no one got it while it was small. Can you tell me why Sprinter isn't up for adoption right now, he asked me. I spared a glance up at the kitten who'd been drawing a lot of attention all morning. Sprinter was a four-month-old short-haired orange tabby on the post-sneezer side of the cat room. That meant she'd previously had a respiratory infection, and even though she was healthy at the time, there was still the potential for her to get non-sneezers sick. By the way, that's one of the biggest reasons why people shouldn't pet shelter animals without permission. Being in such close quarters all day means one sick cat can cause an outbreak, and that can be dangerous for all animals, but kittens especially. She also had a big bandage wrapped around her throat. Sure enough, there was a bright blue sticker on the window of her kennel that said she wasn't currently up for adoption. Now, there is a whiteboard in the kitchen that has information on some of the animals, but not only was there no guarantee Sprinter would be on that board, I would have to ask a staff member to let me in since volunteers don't have keys to get into the back, and I might not even be able to understand what information was available since I'm far from a veterinarian. I'm sorry, I said, I don't know for sure. The last thing I wanted to do was tell him she was recovering from something, although I didn't know what, and risk a rumor that the animals at the shelter were all sick or something. He got a funny look on his face, but I'm pretty socially awkward and bad at reading people, so I kind of brushed it off and kept working on the knot in Mrs. Quimbley's fur. Can you tell me again when she will be up for adoption? I'm sorry, I said again, I don't know that either. Well, what are those papers for then? He was talking about a single folded up sheet of paper on each kennel. It has the cat's name, shelter number, weight, age, and sex. I told him it doesn't say anything about why they're here or anything like that. Don't you know anything he huffed at me? And I was sort of confused and a little irritated by that, but he moved on pretty quick. Well, what about the other one, that black and white one, Magic? Yes, what about Magic? Can I pet him, at least, he asked. I said, sure. The staff members at the front desk would be happy to set up an interaction. Adoptions are just one of the many things at the shelter volunteers don't get involved with. Why can't you do it? You're right here, and all you're doing is petting that cat. 
I still haven't realized yet that he thinks I work there. I have the observational powers of a rock at the bottom of the ocean. I know, but as I said earlier, it's not unusual for people to ask volunteers questions. I can't set up interactions, I explained. I mainly do chores and socialize the animals, but I'm sure the ladies at the front desk would really love to help you. He snorted at that. Full-on pig snort, right from his belly. He said, God, you millennials are all so lazy. All you've done since I got here is pet the cats. If you're not going to work, then why don't you quit so that someone who actually wants to make something of their life can have a job? I was sort of stunned by this. I didn't really know the best way to respond. Normally, I would have gotten angry, but even though I don't work at the shelter, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize its image. So, I always try to act professionally, even when I'm telling people I can't help them. So what I ended up saying was, sort of shyly, I'm a volunteer here, sir. I'm not actually an employee, so I can't help you with the adoption process. If you want to meet an animal, the staff members, he cut me off. You're wearing scrubs, he snapped. He didn't really raise his voice or anything, but it was a little scary because he was a pretty big dude, and I'm short and a scrawny 19-year-old girl. And at that point, we were pretty much alone because most people want to look at the dogs, which are in another hallway when we have any. I know you work here. He did something weird and mean with his voice when he said work because my daughter volunteered here for class and she had to do laundry and dishes and she had to wear an apron. The shelter is a popular place for high school students to do their 20 hours of required community service for civics class, so for the most part they get put in the back on cleaning duty since they'll probably leave as soon as they're done. That also helps the volunteers who are there just because they want to volunteer be able to have better jobs like me and my socializing the cats. I tried to explain this to the man, but he got all red in the face and snapped, I don't want to hear your excuses, just do your job. I wish I could say I did something cool like telling him I am and going back to poor Miss Quimbley, but actually I just stuttered out something like, but I don't work here. He stepped into the room and headed over to the kennel where Magic was curled up in a shoebox, blissfully unaware of everything that was happening. Now, I definitely wouldn't be a match for this guy, but as soon as he crossed that door jam, he was in my space. I slipped in front of Magic's kennel doors and told him as firmly as I could that this area was for staff and volunteers only, and he'd have to leave. I'm going to school to be a teacher, and I think I have a pretty good, nice but stern voice, he huffed at me again. Luckily at that moment, Haley, an actual staff member there and a good friend of mine by this point, came around the corner and saw what was happening. She said, excuse me, sir, but you're not allowed to be in this room. He turned to her and told her that I was being lazy and not doing my job, basically repeating everything he'd already complained to me about. He said that I was obviously not a high school student, so he didn't understand why I was trying to claim I was a volunteer. Haley, amazing woman that she is, coolly told him, we have a lot of volunteers outside of high schoolers who only care about passing one class. Tharwin has been volunteering here for almost a year insert shelter name, depends on the work that volunteers like her do for us. Now, I'll ask you one more time to leave and not harass our volunteers anymore, or else we have a police officer in the back every day, and I'm sure he'd be happy to show you to the door. He turned bright red again and called her a rude name, but we really did have a police officer in the building. I remember being told why during an orientation, but for the life of me, I can't remember now. And he must have seen the car in the parking lot because he left after that. Haley had Officer Rick walk me to my car after my shift, but the man was long gone. My supervisor just sent me a long email apologizing for the incident. Today, Sprinter was adopted by a lovely family with a little boy who has a heart condition. I was told he liked the scar on Sprinter's chest. I'm glad she got her forever home in the end. I stuck through the dirty work of daily household chores for 40 plus animals a day because I found I liked the work and giving back to my community but especially I enjoy seeing these wonderful animals find loving homes. Oh, and I consider myself one of the older members of Gen Z, not a millennial. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos, click here. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's very important to me. And I'll see you soon.